Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will show you how you can use the Android Studio Profiler in order to measure and analyze your app's performance. Because obviously before you can think of improving your app's performance, you first of all need to know where you have potential performance bottlenecks. And to find these, the Android Studio Profile is just an excellent tool. And even if you have used the Android Studio Profiler before, I'm pretty sure in this video you will learn some new things you might have not known before. And if you want to follow along, you can open any of your Android Studio projects, ideally an app that has real behavior, that maybe has a network request, that does something, that has something we can actually measure performance of. I open Tasky for that, which is the app participants of my 10-week mentorship program built over the course of 10 weeks. But it shouldn't be the focus of this video how we can build this app. If you want to learn that, then apply to that program down below. The topic of this video is how we can now measure the performance of such an app. And to do that, we first of all need to attach the profiler to our app's process. So inside of Android Studio, I already have that window here, that little profile icon. It's likely you don't have that. Uh, in order to add that, you need to go to View, um, Tool Windows, and then make sure to click on Profiler. That will open the Profiler, and here you can then attach a session. Uh, normally, it does that automatically, but we can also add one here by clicking on Plus and then selecting our process. And then you can already see three things here, three categories in, in terms of performance. On the one hand, CPU, memory, and energy. So CPU usage, um, as the name says, just um, tracks how much the CPU of your device is used. Um, so that will go up, for example, if you have complex algorithms in your app, if you have any difficult um, processing logic, whatever that might be. Then we have memory, so how much memory your app actually allocates. So if you have really huge objects saved in memory, then this will go up. You, you can also see how much memory your app currently needs. In this case, it's 120 megabytes, roughly. And lastly, we have the energy usage, which tells us how much battery our app drained at a specific time. There's also a network profiler, which was previously also contained here in this Android Studio profiler, but that has been moved to a different tool window, which I'll also show you in this video. Um, but the three categories, CPU, memory, and energy can be found here in this profiler. Right now, if we don't do anything, then this, of course, won't look very special. But we can change this by going into our app and just doing something. For example, we can add a little event. So it's a simple task in the event management app, like a Google Calendar clone kind of, or we can add an event here. And as soon as we do something, you can see that we also see little spikes here. So we can enter maybe an event title here, um, new event title, I don't know, just doing something that the app needs to process a little bit of um, behavior. We can also add some photos, which we can attach here to upload to the service. I don't know, some random screenshots I have on my device here. Just selecting these. And yeah, then if we click save, and then all these photos will be uploaded to our server. And after that, we can take a look in the profiler and see what actually happened here. There's our event, but we can now go back and see First of all, for the CPU usage, we can, for example, click directly here on that spike, and then we get a detail view for that CPU usage. Because here we can just, um, here we have more functionality that we um, might be interested in when it comes to tracking our S performance. If we scroll a little bit here in that window, then you can see the profiler is paused, so it's not automatically moving anymore, and we can then inspect our app. And here we can now see at which given time frame our app was um, used how much percent of the CPU and, for example, how many threads we also used at that given uh, time. So in this case, 69 threads were active by our app at that time. Here, it were only um, 30, uh, 63. We can then also see where these threads actually came from. So in this case, just from the app itself. But something interesting is that we can also, for example, trace our Java and Kotlin method calls. So if we click this here, and then we need to record a given um, given time frame here in our application again by just scrolling to the very end. I think then it should start automatically again. Yes, you can see we then click record and then it's currently recording our behavior. And if I now go back in our app and maybe update that event, you also notice that it's very laggy because um, this recording is in progress. But let's say we click edit, we maybe, I don't know, remove one photo remove this here, and then after that we hit save again to update that event. If we do that, then you can see event updated, and we can then stop the recording, 
And then you might see a little warning that the trace file is too large. Of course, um, the, the longer the recording gets, the longer the trace file will also become containing which method calls were actually executed in a given time frame. But that can just be very helpful if you see you have huge spikes in your uh, CPU usage in the profiler and you want to inspect where these come from, then you can make such a method trace. I will discard that here because we didn't really have any performance issues here. But if you really have that, if you notice, okay, there's actually um, quite a spike, then it makes a lot of sense to also trace these method calls um, to find out where that spike is coming from in case you're just not sure from where. Of course, um, if you're doing something and you know why a certain thing uh, causes a spike, then you don't need that method trace, then you probably already know where to look in the code and where to uh, fix and work on that performance issue. But so much about CPU. If we go back, let's take a look for memory. We can also click on that. And then we also get a little um, a little categorized view here, which or how much memory actually is used by which yeah, kind of category. So by Java, by the, the native development kit, by graphics, by the stack and by your code. And that's something we could also record right now. So for example, we could capture a heap dump. So we can see which objects actually, um, which objects are actually currently in memory. If we click record and then Wait a little moment, it's fetching the results. Then we have a current heap dump, so just a list of all objects that are currently saved in memory in our heap. And we can take a look which objects actually require the most memory. So in this case, some kind of segment pool, you can see on the right retained size is 164,000 bytes large. But if we go down here, you can also see some familiar names, for example, main activity, and we can see, okay, main activity actually uses 3,600 bytes in memory. So if you have issues with your app's memory usage, then this is the place to look. Then make such a heap dump to see which objects actually need a lot of memory and then work on these. But of course, only if that is an issue. If your app runs super fluently, memory isn't an issue, then you also don't need to optimize any performance things. But we can then also go back to this view we could also, for example, record Java and Kotlin allocations. Um, I'm not quite sure what the difference um, to a heap dump right now is, but let's click record and see what that gives us. I think that just records um, similar things, but if we now use this app, yes, if I now click something, I just clicked something, then you can see how these new things are actually added to this list. Uh, but um, we can also just see how many memory allocations each type of object here needed. Um, we can see the size of that as well. So that is quite comparable to what we saw before. If we now go back, let's go to memory because I think, uh, yes, let's quit that uh, because I think that was the important uh, stuff that you need to know when it comes to tracking how much memory your app uses. Let's go one step further and go into battery usage. So here in energy, just click into that window and then here we can't really see a lot of extra information but we just get a more detailed view where our app actually used a lot of memory and also where that memory usage came from so here you can see um, that memory usage or that spike came from the cpu but not from the network or location because usually these are also the three things that um, are the most battery draining so cpu networking and location tracking if we now scroll to the very right so tracking goes on and we make some kind of network call, for example, uh, by editing this event's title, something like this, click save and click save. Then you will also notice that the app requires some battery here. And here we can also then see that the network usage is light. So in that case, we of course had to make um, a network call and that is also reflected here in our uh, battery profiler. Also here on the top, for these little red bubbles. These indicate that at this point you made um, a touch event. So in my case, I just clicked on some kind of UI event, but that can help you to also indicate that this was a user action that triggered this battery spike. Or it could also be that something in the background caused that battery spike. So if you have maybe a big spike and you're not sure if that was caused by yourself, by you doing something in the app or by a background service, then you can use these red bubbles to actually, yeah get a feeling for where that spike might come from. But I think everything else here in this energy window is pretty self-explanatory. There's also not too much more we need to go into. What's also relevant is here on the left for that active profiling session, you can also see all these allocation records, um, this heap dump, Java Kotlin method trace. So all these recordings we did, you can also see here 
and save. So here you can click on the save icon to also save these somewhere on your machine. But the last thing that I want to get into is network performance. So if your app performs some kind of network request, how you can track these and how you can see how much traffic there is actually going out of your app and coming into it. And that actually was moved out of this profiler where that was previously and it was moved into this app inspection window. So in case you don't have that, you can also open this with a view tool windows and then um, where is it app inspection and open it that way. That's also where you have that database inspector, but that's not what we want to go into right now. We want to go into this network inspector. And if we click on this, it also starts running. Right now, no active network requests are firing, but as soon as we change this, for example, by actually renaming this event again, new, save. And as soon as we now click save, then you will notice that there is a spike. We see how many kilobytes, megabytes per second we're currently sending. And we can then use this here to inspect this. If we scroll a little bit, then it will stop to move. And we can see at this spike, it sent with 11.6 um, kilobytes a second. Oh no, it actually received something. So the response of that network request with uh, 11 kilobytes a second, and it sent that with 1.5 kilobytes a second. That can be good to know, but I think what's especially very interesting in this network profiler is that we have something similar to the Chrome web developer tools. So if you ever did something with web development, then you know that in Chrome, you can also inspect which network requests, which HTTP requests are fired from a website. You can inspect the response. So what kind of JSON response was returned. You can inspect the request. You can inspect the HTTP headers. And what most people actually don't know is that Android Studio also has such a tool, which is this network inspector. So here you can see all these requests that were fired since we started that network inspector. In this case, it fired something here. You can see to this URL, tasky.plcoding slash event. Don't even try to send something through that endpoint. You will need an API key, which you only get in my mentoring program. But if we click on this, then we get something very similar as we know from Google Chrome. So on the one hand, we get the whole JSON body that was returned from the server. So quite some, quite some lines of code here. And that pretty much allows you to completely get rid of things like an, a logging interceptor for a retrofit, which logs all requests that are outgoing and uh, all the responses that are coming into your app. Because Android Studio already has that internal uh, logging interceptor for your network requests. So there's really no need for you to add your own interceptor where you then need to search for logs, take a look in logcat, filter these. Um, so that's quite some effort to find out what, what you sent to an API and what you received. No, here in this network inspector, you get that all in a little bit more readable format. It's still not formatted, I don't know why, but you get all the details here. So the request was sent to the event endpoint. It was a put request. Uh, status code was okay, so 200 content types, so everything you need to know. You can also go into the response tab here. Then here you get it as a formatted JSON, which is much more readable than you get in a logcat with using a logging interceptor. You also see the request. So what was sent to the server, you can see the uh, the headers, so authorization, what kind of token you attached. And if we take a look under call stack, then you would just see which calls have been made to perform that request. You can see it went over a few interceptors. On the one hand, the JWT token interceptor, which attached the token to the request in this case, and the API key interceptor, which attached the API key to every request. So whenever you have some kind of network related issues, maybe you are getting a response, but not the right data, what you expect, or you're unsure if the correct data gets sent to the server, then take a look in this network inspector because it tells you all that without needing to search in Logcat. So I hope this gave you a good introduction to how this profiler and measuring performance in Android Studio works. Of course, it's always best to just try this out in your own projects, just play around with that a little bit, and you quickly get a good feeling for what kind of functionality you often need in this profile and which is rather fancy for um, specific use cases where you have a specific problem. But what I showed you in this video is what you really need in 90 to 95% of the times. And no matter if you have active performance issues in your app or not, it definitely makes sense before you publish your app to just run the profiler once, have a normal usage of your app because just because an app performs well on one device doesn't mean it needs to perform well on all devices out there. So I hope this helped. Thanks so much for watching. I wish you an amazing rest of your week. I'll see you back in the next video. Bye-bye.